Hello, hello, great friends. Welcome, welcome to Academic Coordinate. In this video, we are looking at linear functions. Sometimes we call them straight lines. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, whichever one is going to help you to sleep at night, right? So, straight lines are lines like these. You know what I'm saying? This is a straight line. In fact, this is also a straight line. This is the y axis, right? And this is also a straight line. This is the x axis, though. So, straight lines, you've got um, the, the simple one. Let's say you have g of x is equal to x. Or let's say you've got y is equal to x, for example. You know what I'm saying? And stuff happens on y is equal to x. It might be shifted, it might be multiplied by a value and stuff like that and maybe your function might change you know as far as how it stands you know in the in the plane so this function have got a general equation or a standard form equation y is equals to m x plus c you know what i'm saying you're gonna come across this you know what i'm saying also in analytical geometry right now m guys here just stands for the gradient of the graph you know the steepness of the graph how steep the graph is or how gentle the graph is that is your guy m m is, is the guy responsible for that then m guys has got a formula m is equal to the change in the y divided by the change in the x you know what i'm saying right so basically um if m changes obviously the graph or the function is going to change there you know what i'm saying to some degree you guys know what i mean um, and then C, guys, here is what is the y-intercept, obviously, where x is equal to 0, such that the coordinates of the y-intercept is going to be 0 and C. If all of this sounds like rocket science to you, just relax, man. I mean, just, just grab a chill pill. You know, we're going to break this down. You're going to get it, right? Okay, cool. Firstly, guys, as far as M is concerned, you know, when m is greater than 0 or when m is positive, your line is going to look something like this. You know what I'm saying? Your line is going to look something like this. You know, that's when m is positive. Then when m is negative, less than 0, your line is going to look something like this, something like this and stuff like that. Okay, that's, those are not the um, good looking lines in the world, but hey, it is what it is, right? And also, guys, I do want to put something here. When m is equal to 0, it means that your gradient is horizontal. Sorry, your line is going to be a horizontal line. Your line is going to look like this. When m is equal to 0. And if I can just push it there and say, when m is undefined. So now, here, guys, m is undefined when you divide by a zero right so obviously here when you divide by a zero m is going to be undefined then this is four vertical lines you know what i'm saying okay fine guys let's not get ahead of ourselves let us just take it one step at a time you know so let's say you've got let's actually plot a graph let's actually plot a graph here right you know so remember straight lines are graphs of this nature you know what i'm saying okay and also let me just put it out there the line y is equal to x is gonna be like this here and then all its coordinates is gonna be if you have you're gonna have one and one two and two three and three uh, four and four zero and zero negative one and negative one and uh, so it's a y is equal to x graph then the y is equal to negative x is going to be like this here you know what i'm saying so this is going to be y is equal to negative x this is y is equal to x okay so now let's say we want to plot our graph let's plot it we're not sketching we are plotting it so let's say they say plot y is equal to 2x right minus 1 for example so you've got your x values and then you're going to have your y values and then now you're going to choose the values of x you guys want to include you can say negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 you 
know what I'm saying? Now we are plotting our graph, you guys. Okay, so we just put the value of x here and then find the value of y. Let's do, for example, y is equals to 2 times x negative 2 minus 1. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, right? Let's do the second one. 2 times negative 1 for here. Minus 1 is 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 1 is minus 3. Right? Minus 3. This one is minus 5. Then we're going to do that, guys, forever and ever. You know what I'm saying? Here we're going to get minus 1. Then here we're going to get 1. Then here we're going to get 3. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, it's going to be 2 times 2, obviously. Minus 1, then we're going to get a 3 here. Then when we are plotting the graph, when we are plotting the graph, so obviously this is not the these are not the straightest lines in the world. Uh, we're gonna find negative two. This is negative one. This is zero. This is one. This is two. So at negative two, your graph maybe is somewhere at negative five. Here at negative three for negative one. Then for zero, it's gonna be somewhere at negative one. Um. Um. Okay. Cool. Wait. For x is equals to 0, right? This is x is equals to 0. It's going to be here at negative 1. Then for at 1, your graph equals to, at 1, your graph equals to 1. And then at x is equals to 2, your graph equals to, what, 3. So it's going to be somewhere here. Then after you guys, you're going to join this thing, right? Then can you guys see that you've got a straight line graph, you know? So that is how you guys do this thing as far as the method of plotting is concerned. And then now, guys, let's look at this thing that we spoke about, about previously. Let's look at this domain thing. Domain. Can you guys see that? Well, let me just get another thick color. Okay, fine. So the domain now, we are looking for the x values where the graph exists, the set of x values where the graph exists. So remember, this is negative 1, negative 2, this quantity is negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, whatever, 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 until, you know, negative infinity. This one also, negative, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, 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 until positive infinity, right? So there is nowhere where this graph does not exist. You know what I'm saying? So now, this means that x is an element of real numbers. This is the domain. Or we can say x is an element. This element just means it's a member of negative infinity to infinity to in positive infinity. So this is a, this is the domain where the graph exists, right? As far as the set of x values. Then now, guys, the range, the range of this graph. You know, we look at the range of this graph. We look now as far as the y values are concerned. This graph. Obviously, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and whatever, whatever, until infinity. This is um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, until negative infinity somewhere there. So basically, even the range, when straight lines are concerned, if they are not restricted, right, y is going to be an element, you know, from negative, remember, from negative infinity until infinity. This is the range of the actual function. And guys, when we are looking at these graphs or at in functions in general, one way or the other, you will meet things called intercepts, right? So intercepts, you've got the y-intercept. These are where the graphs, okay, this is the, this is the value where the graph is going to cut the y-axis, right? Now, that's the y-intercept. And remember what I said. This is the y-axis, but the equation of the y-axis is x is equal to 0. This is the x-axis, but the equation of the x-axis is y is equal to 0. Right? So now, if you are finding intercept, you find the y-intercept and you find the x-intercept. When you find the y-intercept, you let x equals to 0. Yeah? So now, when you do that, remember now you have y is equal to mx plus c. Right? So basically, when you do that, you let x equals to 0 because um, it, you need the value of y where the graph is, where the function is going to cut. You know what I'm saying? 
So basically, um, so now you're going to have your function y is equal to m, where there's x, you put a 0 plus c. So m times 0 is 0 plus c. So y is equal to c. That is why, you guys, we said the c there. Can you see the c there is the y-intercept? So now, the coordinates of the y-intercept will be what? It's going to be 0 for x, right? It's going to be 0 for x and c. You guys get it? All right. Then let's look at the x-intercept now, guys. The x-intercept, you know, for, so, so for x, you guys, for x, the, where the graph is going to cut the x-axis, remember we said the equation of this line is, is y is equal to 0. So now you let y equals to 0 in this case. So um, it's going to be 0 is equal to mx plus c. Then you solve for x. Let's do an example. Let's say we're doing this function. And let's say you had y is equal to 2x minus 1. Okay? So if we let y equals to 0, um, so it's going to be 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. So we take, um, we add 1 both sides, so then we're going to get 2x is equal to 1. Okay? Then x is going to equal to a half. So the coordinates of the x intercept, they are there. A half and zero. So whenever you see a coordinate, yeah, guys, um, where one of either the x or the y is zero, that means that that is the intercept, right? If um x is zero, so that is the y intercept. Then if a uh, y is zero, that is the x intercept. I trust, guys, that that rings a bell. All right. So basically, the x intercept where your graph cut the x-axis and then the y-intercept where your graph cuts the y-axis. 